May the peace be with you. You are the missionary to save this world. Must restore 10,000 disciples in the age of the 37 with the blessing of firstborn. Uh, one of you sent me a, a, a message. Why don't we do a, a choir in Hana Hall? We have five different places worshiping together. We expand the choir and all those five places have a choir. Some of you are not able to participate in this place. But all of you receive the greatest blessing of throne and great answers today. Because it's power to send in time and space wherever we are. When you focus on Christ, and those of you who are sitting here and those who are, uh, are not receive the same blessing. From where, where you are, may you glorify God's name. As the choir prays today, God who created me will find him and return to your place. I bless in the name of the Lord. We're looking at the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy is as the Israelites conclude the life of wilderness and then it talks about what they need to prepare before going into the land of Canaan. When they enter into Canaan, how are they going to live a walk of faith? When you enter into the land of Canaan, how are you going to do worship? How are you going to do your church life? It, re it repeats how they should prepare the wilderness was a place to prepare before going into the land of Canaan. Prepare everything. It, it is the wilderness. There are things that we must not lose hold of in the wilderness. God talks to the Israelites where they should concentrate. And that's why God prepared the book of Deuteronomy to tell the Israelites what to prepare. What should they prepare in the, in the wilderness? The message, in one word, is the blessing of throne. Yes, the Deuteronomy talks about the gospel. But while they were in the wilderness, the whole message the whole message is that we need to find and enjoy the blessing of throne. And those who find the blessing of throne can enter into enter, enter the land of Canaan. Once you find the blessing of throne, the true answers will take place. The Israelites who came out of Egypt for 40 years, they walked in the wilderness. Most of them died. But Joshua and Caleb, they conquered. They raised as a main figure to conquer the land of Canaan. Those two individuals have seen the blessing of throne. The most important thing in the walk of faith is that we, uh, we receive the blessing of the throne. Then how can we find the blessing of the throne in the wilderness? It is difficult enough to walk in the wilderness. God told them to uh, make the turban of He talks about bl uh, blessing of the throne. 
And it, there are elements in the turbinacle to prepare God's work. There are so many tools and elements in the turbinacle, and all each one of them has a, a meaning. It, it symbolizes the, uh, the Christ. Even the tools and elements talk about the blessing of throne. In Deuteronomy 16, it talks about three feasts. God told them not to forget the three feasts and keep these three feasts every year. In one word, it talks about blessing of throne. They came, uh, the Israelites came out of Egypt and they crossed the Red Sea and broke uh, Jericho and crossed the Jordan River. Crossing the Red, breaking the Jericho and crossing the Jordan were not the purpose of God. It is also talking about blessing the throne. But this blessing of throne in the most difficult times for these lights, God gave them the message of blessing of throne. The blessing of throne needs to be revealed to us. Many of you say our lives is like the walking in the wilderness. Our journey is like the walking in the wilderness. The certain thing is, if we enjoy the blessing of throne, the problems of your past, you will realize that it is actually to, uh, God wants to, God wanted to give answers to you. If you really know the blessing of the throne and enjoy it, and the problems are not the problems anymore, but you will see that God has prepared the great answers. The most precious thing in the walk of faith is to find the blessing of uh, you need to find the blessing of stone. We will not fight for our position. You need to open your eyes to see the blessing of throne. You will put down your worries. You need to see the blessing of throne. What the world people think is worth it. We will not shake from it. At this time, may this worship that you see and open, you open your eyes to see the blessing of throne. The, the blessing that we must find is the blessing of throne. If not, no matter how much we walk of, walk of, uh, walk of faith, it will not take place. Then how can you enjoy the blessing of throne? How can you enjoy the blessing of throne right now? What you need right now is Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. In other words, in the flow of words, the word needs to be imprinted. That's how you enjoy the blessing of God. Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9, Fear, O Israel, God said. He mentioned an important thing. The core of it is to imprint the word. Right now, the great ministry to enjoy the blessing of throne is that the, the word is being imprinted. That's the method to enjoy the blessing of the throne. That's why every week their message is given to you. Don't miss those messages. And all the trainings during the week. And on Saturday, we listen to the core message and business message. And we can summarize those messages throughout the week.
And on, on Sunday, through a puppet, you can summarize all the messages for that week and don't lose the, the flow of the message. When you keep following the flow of the words, you could you could hold on to the message in one word. With that word, you can do 24 hours unknowingly that word will be imprinted in you. And in, the word will reveal in your field. The most important thing is don't lose, uh, lose hold of the flow of the words. When I prepare Sunday, I read the Bible when I meditate and I do a meditation prayer. I don't simply do it from the, the messages of the week and pray for the message that I will give. I pray in one, uh, one sentence. And among the believers in our church, they, they take memo in their own words. I receive so, many, uh, so much grace from it. Uh, some of you uh, sent. Uh, so uh, I used to, uh, they, they used to post uh, their grace on bulletin boards and then I used to click uh, favorite, the like. I received grace from the bulletin boards uh, from how the believers receive uh, grace. I experienced that the, uh, the words are actually living words of God. I receive grace from the, the memos that uh, believers uh, post. Every day, the message from prayer journal I really receive praise from those posts, those memos. The one sentence, one verse that you summarize will imprint in you and rooted in you and will become your nature and you will enter into power in your life. Unknowingly, you will enter into blessing of God. Last week, I gave you a homework. When you start the day, how many minutes? Five minutes. Five minutes of meditation. I'll give you homework today. When you start a day, it would be okay if you only do it once a day. Think about the grace that you received on public message. May you give one sentence a memo. When it stores and when it stacks up, and you will enter into the power of God. With the flow of the words, leave in your own words. If not, just write down the titles of the message. There are many elders in our church. And those who are over 85 or 86 years old, they show their uh, journals. The, the titles and the scripture reading for the Sunday worship and the core message. And they write in one sentence and they prepare the journals and show them to me. Do not throw away. Keep it with you 
In the last days, and reveal the uh, last days, may you check and confirm how God works and relate to your next generation, your children, and show them how God guided you. The words change your thoughts, change your life. Unknowingly, God will guide you to the blessing of throne. You will see that. For your entire life, you need to enjoy in the flow of the words. One word, one sentence, make it into your own, set, uh, own words. That's how what we call grabbing hold of the co correct covenant, accurate covenant. We call it grabbing hold of accurate covenant. Even if we cannot live up to the covenant, but if you hold on to the covenant, that's where God works. How? With the blessing of throne, He works. Why am I keep, keep, keep giving you homework every week? You need to revive. You need to save this uh, uh, the last days. You need to save next generation. Moment by moment, may you hold on to the accurate covenant and may your life enter into the blessing of throne. So today's title is The Life of Those Who Have Power to Win Over the World. What's the life of those who have the power to win over the world? In one word, in, uh, in one word, it only it's only possible with the blessing of throne. The blessing of salvation is blessing of throne. The salvation you receive is blessing of throne. Throne, God governs the life. God called you and saved you with the name of Jesus Christ. If you receive salvation, the blessing of throne is already with you. The blessing that you must enjoy every day is blessing of, of throne and blessing of salvation. Until the last days, the blessing you must enjoy every day, blessing of salvation and blessing of salvation is a blessing of, of throne. Let's take a look at the blessing of uh, salvation we must enjoy every day. When these lights came out of Egypt, they, they came out in a hurry. They could not prepare anything. Not only the Israelites, uh, in that age, people used to eat bread. Uh, they came, so they came in a hurry. They could not prepare. So they brought the unleavened bread. That's what they brought out. With this unleavened bread, what does God wants to say? God wants to tell us to live distinguished life from the world. Don't follow the method of the world people, but to live distinguished life from the world. That's what God wants to tell us with this un unleavened bread. The bread without yeast is unleavened bread. The Israelites uh, ate this unleavened bread after the Passover. As they crossed the Red Sea, they suffered. What they ate is unleavened bread, as the bread of suffer. What does it tell us? Don't follow the method and the way of life of the world, but live a life of a holy, a holy life. The Passover feast is only one day. Why did God tell them, to tell the Israelites to keep the the unleavened feast, and they, he told them to keep it for, for a week. God wanted them to enjoy the blessing of salvation 
for a week, keep enjoying the blessing of salvation. Enjoy the blessing of salvation seven folds. Many believers receive salvation. They, they lose the thanksgiving of blessing of salvation. God guides God not only save us, but God guides us. And God wanted, wants us to live with the blessing of salvation every day. God is telling the Israelites to enjoy the uh, uh, prosper blessing of uh, throne, a uh, blessing of salvation. Why do we come to the same Sunday? That's why we do all in on Sunday to enjoy the blessing of salvation for the rest of the week. Throughout all the meetings, on Sunday, don't do anything else. We restore the blessing of salvation, enter into the blessing of salvation, so that you can continue to enjoy uh, for the rest of the rest of the week. The salvation is complete and tremendous. God gave us salvation to enjoy every day. We need to enjoy this every day. Why? Because the only complete thing we have is salvation. Why is it, on, why is it only and complete? When you look at the contents, it, it is tremendous. What? What, it, what are the contents of salvation? People live diligently. They do their best. But they don't know one thing. The background of, of life. The, back, uh, the, the darkness is working. That's what they don't know. The darkness is leading them. That's what they, they, what they don't know. Even though those who believe, they lead, they lead the mission and need to live a good life. That's how, why they suffer. Whether you acknowledge or not, that's the background of our lives. The Satan is dragging our lives. That's what you need to know. John 8:44. You belong to the Father, the devil. The father of lies and desire. He deceives you even now. This evil Satan is attacking in your life and you don't know this. Even why did Christ came to this world? To break the head of Satan, that's why he came to this world. This is John 1 John 3 8. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. And people don't know the, the reason of suffering. They think that they do something wrong and they suffer. They face curses and uh, disasters because they did something wrong. Isaac was uh, given as a sacrifice, and Abraham gave Isaac to for sacrifice to uh, sacrifice Isaac. And Isaac didn't know, and Abraham didn't tell him the reason, and God prepared the land. Why do we suffer? Passes, the, the paradise doesn't come. The curses and the disasters keep coming. Why? It is from original sin. The disasters and curses have no choice but to keep coming. Even if we live diligent lives, we cannot be free from original sin. Even if we are morally correct, we cannot solve this problem. The suffering. The reason is original sin. It is because of original sin. But many people don't know the reason. 
God knows it is a cross of original sin, and God sent Christ. God sent Christ as a sacrifice. It's Mark 10.45. And to give his life as a ransom for many. He became ransom for all of us and so everything on the cross. We are not in suffering by disasters and curses. In Hebrews 9.12 it says, He did not enter by means of the blood of goats and cows, but he entered the most holy place once for all by his own blood having obtained eternal redemption. They accomplished eternal redemption. With the blood of Christ, we receive the eternal redemption at once. In Hebrews 10, 14, it says, because by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever. He has made perfect forever. By one sacrifice, He became sacrifice. He made us holy. That's salvation. The world people, what are the problems which people of the world suffer without knowing? It's destiny, fortune. They live in this. You and I are free are made through Christ. Why do people live in their destiny? Ephesians 2, 1 to 2, because you are dead in your transgressions and sins, because your, uh, your spirits are dead. Ephesians 2, 2, you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the, and the rules of kingdom of the air. You have no choice but to follow Satan. You follow, you follow the, the ways of the world and then have no choice but to follow their destiny. Why do uh, people of the world do idol worship? Because that's how the people of the world live. And you and I are completely free from it because of Christ. Romans 8 2. Because of through Christ, Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. The more you enjoy the blessing of salvation, you will have true freedom. John 8.32 Then you will know the truth. The truth will set you free. Every day, the more you enjoy this blessing, your life, you will become a person of, of strength. The blessing we must enjoy while we live in this world is blessing of throne and blessing of uh, blessing of salvation. May you experience in your field this week how tremendous this, these blessings are. Everyone in this world do a fortune telling, but you and I. We don't need to do that. We don't need to go and, and, and listen to the fortune telling because all the answers in the in the words. That's why you only thing you have to do is follow the flow of the words. You will see the future. The problems that you face and the conflicts. Once you hold onto the flow of the words, you will see the future from the words. As it stacks up. As it stores, that the past will become a platform. And through today, you will see the future. You will see. You will. Uh, you will actually drag the future and see it in the present time. It is really important what stores in you, because eventually it will reveal. When the words are stored in you. Unknowingly, all, your, all of your past will become your platform. See the future right now. You can see the future in the present time. We don't need to go to Fortune Teller to see this to the future. Not only see the future, because you see the future, you will enjoy the blessing of conquer.
The blessing of throne, blessing of salvation, which are given to us, the great path to have uh, received blessing of throne is to follow the flow of the words and having the words imprinted. I bless in the name of the Lord. May you receive the evidence. There are two blessings given to us. You will never perish. God changed our fundamental. It is our identity of being a child of God. The moment you believe Christ, you and I are saved. Our identity is changed. The identity is changed. We will never perish because your ide identity is changed because it means God changed your fundamental. Not God did not stop there. He also given us authority, authority to save the world, save the people, save the field. God gave us authority. So authority is blessing of throne. The more you enjoy this blessing, you will see the realistic works of God in your field, and then the words will be the actual strength to you. What's the blessing that will come after? Before uh, you were scared, you were worried, before it will become prayer. You are living in a sigh, and it, it will become prayer. You feel a hunger or emptiness, and you will be filled with a work of God. That's the walk, uh, walk of, of faith of believers. All of your worries and sighs be became uh, praise. You felt emptiness and you were lacking. But one day, you, uh, your life became a life where God feels what you're lacking. It's a blessing of fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. As you enjoy the blessing of salvation, face the problems. It is a, it is a, it's a, there's a great difference where you face the problem while you enjoy the blessing of uh, a blessing, blessing of salvation. And when, you're not, when you are led by the Spirit of God, you may face difficulties. But difficulties and problems don't make you perish. But God opens more doors. Through it, through them. Why are there difficulties? If there are no difficulties, then there is no answers from God. The point is whether you receive those, face the problems where you are filled with the Spirit of God or not. We are influenced by three things. First, we are we are influenced by ourselves. Their nature is being uh, built unconscious, in the, uh, unconsciously. That becomes your nature, and it will reveal. That's what many of you have is the problem of the field. Problem of the field is the twelve Satan problems. That's what people are influenced. And third problem is the problem of disbelief from people relationships. That's what influences you. We are influenced by it. 
we received scars from it. People listen to, uh, they, people listen to the uh, words of the people and they misunderstand. They look at the renowned and successful individual. We think that they are so strong. And when you look at yourself and you, you may feel pity of yourself, that's the misunderstanding. That person doesn't actually know the, the, the gospel. That person is actually facing more problems. If you are shaken by uh, those individuals, the worldly nature is called Satan problems. And the problem from people, how can you overcome those problems is to receive the Holy Spirit, the feeling of the Holy Spirit. Look, let's look at the early church. Because they were, they received the feeling of the Holy Spirit. They did not have any problem. They, they had more problems as a, a persecution. The work of salvation did not stop. At three, uh, Peter actually raised a crippled man. And at three in the morning, in the afternoon. It, it, in other words, time when he enjoyed the gospel. Jesus gave him the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, to Peter. Peter proclaimed, I do not have silver and gold, but I give you what I have. Walk in, walk in the name of Nazareth. And the miracle of crippled man standing up. It's not the problem of crippled man standing up. The fact that Peter proclaimed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Holy Spirit came upon Peter in the building of the Holy Spirit. As Peter saw a crippled man, he proclaimed the work of salvation. In Acts chapter 4, he was uh, stood before the uh, judge. Peter proclaimed the first message ever in this world. Acts chapter 4, 12. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to man by which we must be saved. When the Holy Spirit came upon him, Peter was able to proclaim this word. He relayed this message to others. And many of them were surprised. How could Peter, who could not speak very well, say those words? How could Peter uh, say those messages? Because Holy Spirit came upon Peter regardless of what he had. God made Peter to speak. Acts 5 and 6, their problems occur in the church. In Acts 5, two believers died in, in church. Let's imagine two people died in our church. It is a problem. But in the early church, two old people, two people died at once. The, the church did not fall into temptation. When you look at Acts 5, the early church restored the power of spirit. It was an opportunity to restore the power of, of spirit. Regardless of all the persecutions, because they received the feeling of the Holy Spirit, those difficulties and problems did not affect them at all. If we really enjoy the mystery of the gospel, enjoy the blessing of salvation every day, you will be going into the filling of the Holy Spirit. At that time, regardless of your strength, the Holy Spirit works. That's how the kingdom of God comes upon you filled. And continuous work of God 
taking place in your life. One thing, blessing of throne, blessing of salvation, you find them and enjoy them every day. Through what? Through words. Blessing of throne, it, talks, it is a blessing of salvation. Restore this blessing every day. Enjoy them through words. One day you will enter into the filling of the Holy Spirit. And nothing in this world will affect you. You will raise as a witness. May I bless the name of the Lord. All the believers receive this blessing. I will conclude the word today. The feast to the Israelites were to enjoy and commemorate the blessing of salvation. And where the Israelites gather, they gather in Jerusalem to keep feast. They receive grace from God. With the grace, they enter in, into the world filled with disasters and idols. They restore distinguished life and overcame and healed the world. They were, uh, their lives were centered around the temple, but we don't have to do that now because the living Christ, only thing we have to is to uh, follow the living Christ because three feasts are completed through Christ. Acts 1, 1 to 8, we know, we know this very well, it talks about Christ, the Passover, Kingdom of God, in verse 3, it talks about our background, uh, verse 8, only Holy Spirit it talks about Pentecost. All of these are completed, accomplished through Christ. If we follow the work of Christ, that's the only thing we have to do. If it uh, follows the work of evangelism, then undoubtedly our lives need to match with 237. Christ accomplished everything, completed everything. If God if Christ is working towards world evangelism and our lives need to be matched in 237 missions, and God will give you uh, all the blessing. Our church is preparing for the age of 237 nations. You may not know this. And our, our message is being translated in five different languages. And then we are doing, uh, uh, we're doing ministry to, to save 237 nations. We also have a team of uh, multi-ethnic group. Each one of them is so important. One of them, uh, one individual of multi-ethnic group is one country. They are already here and we already have established to, uh, 237 uh, system. We need only to pray together for this. We, all, we also need to pray, uh, break down our frame for 237 nation. We, talk, we said about the minds towards 237. We need to prepare a vessel to store 237 as we pre, uh, break our frames. Believers of, of Hana Church have so much pride for Hana Church. But in one, in one word, in other words, you need to break the frame of Hana Church for 237 nation. Yes, it is a good thing, but for 237 nation, you need to break that, even break that uh, frame. If you just say Hana Church, Hana Church, we will not prepare vessel for 237 nation. As God works for the word evangelism, God wants to, us to prepare for 237 nations, then we need to prepare our vessel. Especially pray for this. We used to have retreat of elders every day. 
is to pray, uh, all elders gather and pray in the direction of the church. And we share the message together. We used to have those times, but last, week, last year we did not have it. And as we start this year, and as I pray for the elders' retreat and thinking how we should be guided, and all the movements of Tana Farm, Yawan Church is the one that is the uh, most uh, uh, advanced in, in the system. When I look at their system, I wanted to see our elders visit them and see how they, they are doing. We need to go forward for 10,000 disciples in 237 nation. Let's all visit Yawan Church and see how the system is being is being operated. I hope that elders can visit them and come back. And last week, I talked to Pastor Chung. This, I've been preparing for this, and he told him to come right away. I will prepare everything, come right away. Yesterday, an assistant pastor from the Yale church called. He said, Pastor Zhang did not used to do this, but because Hana Church is requesting, he preparing, he has prepared everything so that they will, they will prepare everything to relay all the system so that we can learn all the systems that they have. The education department, all the departments that was set up uh, perfectly. When, if, we, will, we will strengthen the relationship of Yawan Church and Hona Church and we will keep assisting you. Pastor Zhang would actually give a, a direct message. In, in, in the Corona era, we could not have, we wouldn't have the meals together. The church will prepare all the meals for elders who are visiting, so they, they will not face any difficulties. So Pastor John directed the assistant pastor to prepare everything. When I listened to that report, I just thought that I could just go and visit and see how they are they doing. And God is letting me see to see the great vessel to prepare. On Saturdays, our pastors are busy. I, I wish the pastor, uh, pastors, even pastors, could participate and do, receive an internship for education uh, education department. I asked the elders. It will be difficult. It will be difficult to spare time to visit. But I really hope the elders, all of you, all the el all elders, uh, can participate. We don't simply say in with our mouth two thirty seven but actually uh, break our frames and establish a uh, system of 237. Uh, city of Daegu is a very conservative. Hana Church is very conservative. Uh, Hana Church is so conserva conservative, uh, it takes three years to adapt to the environment. When new families come, it is really, really difficult to adapt is Hana Church. If we're really going forward uh, 237, we need to break those frames. We overcome uh, the frame of our own church. If we censor around uh, 237, then we need to prepare new frames for that.
I really hope that believers can pray and uh, elders participate in the Department of Media and uh, pastors, of, pastors will participate. I really think that we will have a new answers from it. To 10,000 disciples uh, believers for 237 nation. I bless in the name of the Lord. God, we give you thanks. While walking in the wilderness, you have given the blessing of and promised the blessing of salvation in the most difficult times. Even our lives going through the most difficult times. And may we realize that God wants to give us blessing, the throne, blessing, salvation. May we not be held on to uh, lose hold of the flow of the words. May all the believers uh, enjoy this blessing. Especially right now, this, I want to set our direction of life, see how Christ is working, and follow the guidance of Christ. I bless you in the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ.